Carmel, Indiana, an affluent majority white suburb just north of Indianapolis. It's known for its idyllic neighborhoods, low crime rates, and some of the country's best public schools. All right, we already know the um, demographics. There. <laughs> but recently, there's been tension in the air. Comments suspended at today's Carmel Clay School Board meeting. The superintendent made that decision after several contentious meetings over the past few months involving debates over diversity and inclusion. In early 2021, Carmel Clay Schools brought in diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives known simply. Why? You're, you're a safe town with great schools. Why? You don't have any fucking son where Carmel, Indiana. What's the demographics? Somebody, somebody, super posted, glider. I will tell you that. Somebody post the demographics for Carmel, Indiana, man. I mean, come on, man. Why? Why did you open this? They, I blame gliders for opening this can of worms. You had a great little town, everything was going smooth. Carmel, Indiana an affluent majority white suburb just north of Indianapolis. It's known for its idyllic neighborhoods, low crime rates, and some of the country's best public schools. But recently, there's been tension in the air. Comments suspended at today's Carmel Clay School Board meeting. The superintendent made that decision after several contentious meetings over the past few months involving debates over diversity and inclusion. In early 2021, Carmel Clay Schools brought in diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives known simply as DEI, a program that seeks to combat structural racism. Since then, a battle has erupted between those that welcome the changes and others who see it as leftist indoctrination of their children. You have lost sight of your responsibilities to educate our children. Parents are learning, watching, and taking action. I think what's most troublesome was the harassment teachers and specific board members were getting at their homes. It's a conflict that has spread from local school board meetings to a culture war dividing parents across the country. They don't care what we think, they don't care what we say, they don't care how we feel. These are government schools to indoctrinate children against their parents. Who are white? In the quiet enclaves of Carmel, one man is leading the fight against these progressive changes. Alvin Louie came to Indiana to escape the leftist indoctrination he claims was taking over his home in California. He leads Unify Carmel, an organization working with local parents to fight against DEI, something that he believes might sound neutral, but is in fact associated with critical race theory, a concept that sees racism as an indelible part of American society and law. And when you have these activist teachers that bring this stuff in, you're literally taking hostage, you know, a captive audience of children. Hi, I'm Amdala. I'm out. Yeah, and that's the thing that, like, look at this. What is this whore doing in fucking Carmel, Indiana? See, the Tigers know it's bullshit. <laughs> the Tigers know that the outcome, just like the gliders that are pissed about this, know the outcomes are bad. Yeah, exactly. They have they have a shrewdness to them um, that that gliders don't have. Um, there's a there's a there's a um, a single mindedness and a straight to the pointness. That, that that tigers have that gliders gliders are more open minded. That's why they're innovators, though. You guys wouldn't be innovative. You guys wouldn't have made planes and trains and car combustible engines and fucking penicillin and all this shit if you weren't open minded. But that does become as a um, hindrance to 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 you um, when you deal with people that are more shrewd than you, like black people. Black people are much more shrewd. Hi, I'm Amdalat. I'm Alvin Louie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Come on in. All right, thank you. What evidence do you have that children are being indoctrinated in the schools now? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one is the way they have the materials that the, the, the teachers read. Uh, they have them read books that are very critical race theory, critical race theory author. Yo, what the fuck is this chick do, man? Listen, man. You should have had the fucking. This is what the KKK was for, though. I'm not even gonna lie, man. I'm not even trying to be funny. Like they would just <laughs> ride near white and like just leave. <laughs> they wouldn't do anything to this woman. They would just come ride out, and she would leave. 
You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't have to lynch them. They would just come well in their horses with their white robes on, and she'd get them. She'd go, oh, I'm out of here. Yeah, this will be an interesting exchange uh, because, like, her whole point of being here is going to be and try and frame this guy and anybody that opposes the DEI stuff as morally reprehensible. Like, this is a this is a communist struggle session, right? To try and get these people to to cave to the social Marxist dogma. But being that this is a tiger, this will be very uh, interesting how this plays out. Yeah, well, he's not going to back down from her because, you know, I mean, he just got he, his mind works different. Yeah, he already knows. He's theory author. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a ton of uh, LGBT gender indoctrination. What they're doing is that they're changing the culture of the schools and changing the way children think about race themselves, America, the values. So you sent me this image. So we have Karl Marx, mm -hmm. we have Tupac, mm -hmm. we have a meme. Yeah. What's indoctrinating about this in a classroom? Well, it's the idea that uh, teachers, activist teachers, are taking upon themselves to put up things like glorifying Marxism. Critical race theory is a Marxist ideology. Is that not just history, though? Because he is a famous figure in history. Ironically, they don't put pictures of anybody else that is pro-America. They're changing the values and the morals of children to hate the country. That's the problem. That's Do you not know education. that they're doing that, though? Yes, 100%. How? Because we have we have whistleblowers, teachers, and... and right here, a white guy would have bent over and let him fuck her ass with a 12-inch dildo. <laughs> And, and, and well, she would she would have gone a lot harder. This whole tell. thing would be see how she's framing it right now. She's trying to play neutral. From the very beginning, she would have said, "You're a white supremacist." the The language would have been totally different. Mm. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. It's showing us that when they teach, they only teach one one direction. Instead of telling them to love the country you live in, do you think teaching kids to love the country that they live in is another form of indoctrination, though? Why would you not want your citizens to love the place you live in? That's like saying, I hate my house. Why would I not want to love the house I live in? Alvin sees facts, these changes man. as fundamentally anti American, a tool to make children overly aware of their racial identities and critical of their country. But some of the evidence he cites, highlighted sections from textbooks were actually teaching students about injustices in America's history, like the Chinese Exclusion Act and Jim Crow laws. The Carmel Clay School administration has a very different viewpoint. Though they weren't willing to give us specifics, they told us that they've retrained teachers to be more sensitive to the backgrounds of students and have prepared children to be a part of the global community, but they claim they haven't changed the academic syllabus itself. They've also brought in social-emotional learning, role-playing lessons which help children understand and regulate emotions, set positive goals, and feel and show empathy for others. Jennifer McWilliams, a local teacher and parent, posted an article highlighting her opposition to this and was subsequently fired from her school. What did the role-playing look like? What did it consist of? What were the topics? So we would give children a scenario and it would it would, a lot of them were not scenarios that were real serious, but it was to influence these children to how to make decisions going forward in all situations. It may be something like if it was a birthday and everybody got a cookie in the classroom, but there wasn't enough for two people, right? Is it okay? What would you do? As we were influencing these children, I began to see this culture shift within the school. The ideology behind that is that it's because they believe that the country is systemically racist or oppressive. And so they believe that everyone is in some way traumatized. It's about ideology and what ideology, the ideology they want to push. Jennifer's example didn't strike me as pushing an ideology, but rather a way to teach students to be kind to each other. But for both Alvin and Elizabeth, teaching anything outside of traditional- Would this woman go to Chicago or DC or Baltimore? and be able to fucking talk to those people like this, those people would, it would be a non-starter. No, well, she thinks that all those people are victims. Yeah, but she would be faced with, like, literally, like, yo, get the fuck out of here. 
You know what I'm saying? Like it would it wouldn't be as welcoming. These gliders are very welcoming and very nice. You know what I mean? They're nice. Well, I mean the way the way it would be taught in those schools though would be completely different. It it would it would the the faculty the people in those schools would want that stuff because their student populations were mostly sons and they love this type of stuff because it's a way for them to dunk on gliders. Like the whole no, vibe saying, when she walked through the door would be a positive experience. No, I'm saying if she came with like the reverse of that, like if she came to to sons with, um, you need to um, think about white people differently. They're not all racist. Um, there are great white people. White people are good. Yeah, look at this thing, nice thing. That oh yeah, they'd throw it back in her face. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have this shit. She'd be chased out of there. Gee, and what ideology the ideology they want to push. Jennifer's example didn't strike me as pushing an ideology, but rather a way to teach students to be kind to each other. But for both Alvin and Elizabeth, teaching anything outside of traditional academia crosses a line. They don't believe that institutional problems, particularly structural racism, are prevalent here. So they don't see a need for institutional change in schools. But I wanted to understand what schooling was like for a student who'd actually been through the system. Hallie Watson graduated from Carmel High School in 2016 and was one of an estimated 60 Black students at a school of over a thousand. Carmel's in huge denial that racism is even a thing here. <laughs> Two chicks with fake hair on the head. No surprise. Yeah, I mean, notice how, how so much of this, no matter where you go, is women. Mm -hmm. All this woke stuff, it's overwhelmingly majority women. And this is the type of stuff women gravitate towards. Like these emotional wow. appeals, these illogical conclusions. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like what pisses me off is you won't be missed if you wasn't here you get what i'm saying like you're not bringing much to the fucking table we were just fine without you and now you're here and life is great but you find something to complain about but if you go to the school where everybody look like you it'll be a different story you get what i'm saying like you'll be worried about getting fucking jumped and all type of shit you know what i'm saying you don't have to worry about none of that aggressive violence or nothing like that but it's it's so good that you're complaining about passive aggressive fucking racism yeah, micro aggressive micro micro aggressive yeah these and, and this girl right here she I, I i'm i'm eager to see what she calls racism they're just like no that that doesn't happen here it happens in the world but not in carbon no, no, no. And especially not in our schools. No, 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 no. Could you talk about some of the instances of your blackness being pointed out by teachers and students? Um, I was in history class and this was my oh, blackness. junior year. And I don't know how we got on the topic, but somehow we did of talking about welfare and a kid asked, like, what, what, what exactly is that? Asked the teacher, what is welfare? I really, I've heard of it, but I don't know what that is. And the teacher's like, mm, well, it's kind of kind of hard to explain. She turned to me. She goes, Howie, you can explain that, right? Can you explain what welfare is? I'm really black. I call bullshit. <laughs> I think she brought it up. Yeah, white, white people know better than to do shit like that, man. I think it's either bullshit or... She spoke about welfare before. Yeah. And it's just like you have experience in speaking about welfare. So <laughs> give us give us Yeah, she's been in there for months being like, You think I'm a motherfucking welfare queen? Throwing shit at people. She slapping skipped all people. the way. She skipped all the way to junior year. So twenty four months have been gone by and there has been no fucking passive, no microaggressions. And then junior year finally. You've been in there two fucking years, and now here it goes in history class. And this is racism. This isn't like annoyance. This isn't, this is racism. <laughs> yeah, this is her fearing for her life. Like she walks in that school yeah, and she thinks she could die. White people are so nice, man. Like, yo, she would have huge problems. 
Yo, her problems at a black school would be so real, yo. Yo, she would have fucking problem problems, man. Man, yeah. you don't understand. You don't understand how like nice Carmel, <laughs> Indiana is, man. This is like this is this is super glider, super fucking like. You know what I'm saying? A hard working class of gliders that have made like themselves wealthy type shit. This ain't like it's it's not it's it's like it's old money there, but it's like the old money is not no fucking you got it from like you know fucking uh privilege type shit. This is like Indiana hard working class. We built farms and now we're wealthy. We built trucking companies and now we're wealthy, you know what I'm saying? Like type of shit. That's what Carmel, Indiana is. And she's here basically saying all of y'all. She, she doesn't realize either, too. I'll give her that. That, yo, this is, you're basically besmirching and smearing these people. What you're doing is you're, you're being a shitty person. This is shitty what you're doing, sister. Like, you're, you're, you're telling everybody. It's like, okay, so tell us about the people in this town. Oh man, let me tell you. She liked Miss Benita. Remember that living color thing where the woman was in the window? Um and she would she would talk about the people by their back. I I ain't the one to gossip, but yeah, I ain't, if you ain't heard it from me, but yeah, let's like, like <laughs> you know, doing this to these people, man. Like, why are you not saying nothing nice about these people? These people have preserved you. You don't have a scratch hey, she, she, on you. Uh, she Colin Kaepernick to his fucking adopted family and shit. Yeah. Students. Um, I was in history class, and this was my junior year. And I don't know how we got on the topic, but somehow we did, of talking about welfare. And a kid asked, like, what, what, what exactly is that? Asked the teacher, what is welfare? I don't really, I've heard of it, but I don't know what that is. And the teacher's like, mm, well, it's kind of kind of hard to explain. She turned to me. She goes, Howie, you can explain that, right? Can you explain what welfare is? I'm the only black kid in the class. And I was like, I was so caught off guard and, and shocked that she just so casually expected me to explain it. Was hearing racial slurs something that was normal at the high school? Um, yes, it was. It became, I realized it was going to be a norm very quickly. And people would say that all the time here that's another thing that i'm the one being sensitive if i'm like hey don't don't comment i don't say that like i don't see don't call you that so they were calling you the sun word she didn't even say what they called it i'm also believing that i'm also believing that for real I ain't gonna lie, like, so Carm, like Carmel, they consider that like the region, so they kind of like feel like they're a suburb of Chicago. So you probably do got some fucking gliders that you know what I'm saying think they, you know, what I'm saying cool enough to fucking say it type shit. But like, she but ain't that's a like, of endearment. She's talking about like, mm, yeah, no, nah, like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. yeah, it won't be like that. It'll be like the endearment type shit. You know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll be, be some, like. I'm cool enough to say it or like right uh, right or like every top 40 song has some fucking right and she hear it she hear the rapping that type shit in the song right like, so it's not to the extreme the- it's not to the extreme of the DMV type of shit you know how people say DMV the area type of stuff but like right. people from northwest indiana they call it the region so Carmel's in that Hammond, South Bend type shit. Um, fucking yeah. uh, it's like the region, and they no, call it like uh, Gary, Indiana, Whiting, Hammond, and yeah, it's like we're all one. They feel like they're a suburb of Chicago type shit, you know? Yeah, but these these people right here, she's in the place where they probably. You know how they say 80% of hip hop is bought by s- suburban whites, purchased. 80% of hip hop records are purchased by suburban whites. And when you go to a hip hop concert, it's all white kids. This is 
she's around people that probably listen to hip hop music like a lot. Like they these kids probably Carmel, they probably listen to Little Baby and Dirk. I can I can vouch they do. That's the type of area it is, you know. Like a lot of them come from like decent homes and everything like that, but it's a a side of yeah, it's a side of Carmel that is, you know what I'm saying, not very wealthy at all, you know. They got their hick ass side too. But the high school is fucking just beautiful, you know? Like the high school got uh, crazy nice facilities, gym, pools, everything. It's super nice, you know? But yeah, everybody not rich because they fucking gliders over there. They got some fucking Hammond, I mean, some Gary, Indiana looking type motherfuckers over there. The hicks are going to listen to country music. Like what I've seen is that the, the wealthy white kids listen to hip hop. In the working class white kids listen to country. Uh, the Midwest is a tad bit different when it comes to that. Okay. Yeah, the tad bit different. The hick, the hick white dudes are like ghetto. Okay. It became. I realized it was going to be a norm very quickly, and people would say that all the time here. That's another thing that I'm the one being sensitive. If I'm like, hey, don't, don't call me that. Don't say that. Like, I don't see, like, why that should be a normal thing for a kid to be like, I hate myself because of my skin color. (laughs) But, yeah, it took a lot. Like, I had to build myself up. No one else was going to do it for me. Hallie's experiences are far from rare here. A local organization, Communities Allied for Racial Justice, collected stories from local students and parents of color that reflect a systemic failure to combat racism. I remember seeing these two white kids in black face, <laughs> and it was just black paint that was just on their face. Um, they were dressed up as if they were in North Central gear. Ashton Spiker co-founded the organization and was instrumental in pushing for progressive change in Carmel. What is your reaction to the parents that didn't really know that this was an issue and kind of feel shocked that this is being pushed in the schools? Yeah, so when we started this work in Carmel last June, um, we realized that Carmel was not at the point that people around us are in understanding that racism even exists. When you have a student that's experiencing racism from their peers or from their teachers, they are struggling to focus. They're struggling to do their work. DEI and SEL and all of that, it's not some boogeyman. It's just genuinely caring about students and wanting them to succeed no matter their background. What would you say to people from Unified Carmel that call these DEI efforts anti-American? Yeah, so that's something that we've heard and that's something I don't understand. So something that we look at other countries and we talk about and we look down upon are when leaders ask people to follow them blindly. And that's not what we should be doing here in America. I love America, but to love something, to truly love it, is to want it to succeed and to want it to be better. And it's not teaching kids to hate America, it's teaching them the truth about what history actually looks like. While the dividing line between those for and against these changes are clear, there is also a large group here that define themselves as somewhere in the middle, uncomfortable with the tactics of Unify Carmel, but unsure of how DEI may be affecting their children. These local parents are concerned about the politicization of schools and a lack of transparency from administrators. I recognize we need to deal with racism, bias, and sometimes just ignorance but we need to make sure it's a constructive approach and not a destructive approach. I see lots of cultural generalizations um, that just aren't necessarily true. She like, yo, I found this nice little enclave to get away from sun words and I want to keep it like that. (laughs) Yeah, she's like, you need to be real careful, bitch. (laughs) How you you come up in my spot and start fucking this shit up. (laughs) Little braided headed hoe. Cause like yo, this is this is actually a great place to live, man. And when they bring this DEI, that's that's the first step. Next thing they're gonna bring in is affordable housing. I'm telling Bingo. you, after Bingo. DEI 
comes affordable housing. And then these kids grow up and they start voting different and it all goes to shit. Yeah. Affordable housing just it ruins it. It won't even they, they, they won't even have to vote. Once you bring affordable housing, it's your city's rule. They're so good at the language though, like the way the people that made this frame this and the words they use. Yeah. It's like witchcraft. It, 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 it's all yeah, it really is. It is wizardry in a sense. It's bitchcraft. Salute, salute to Savage, man. Self guilty white. Occupation Hall of Fame. When you hear uh so like this we're watching this, right? And so, you know, when they when they put things out on TV, right, they say they use the word broadcast, right? Mm -hmm. If you break down the word broadcast, what you're actually saying is you're what, what do you cast? A spell, a spell. You're broadly casting a spell on people's consciousness. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, that that. That's beyond, like, I mean, what they're doing. Because even in those days when they was talking about spells and everything, that shit was bullshit. That was just like some person, ah, this, this shit right here, the, what, what we have in the modern age, man, I mean, we jumped the shark on that. You can't even fathom how fucking um, it's Twitter, your mm. phone, like all that shit. We, we, we're so far past, like, casting spells. <laughs> we're in the programming now. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I'm saying, though. It's not, it's not mystical or magical. There's no like, you know, like we're throwing like a bat wing in a pot of boiling bullshit or whatever. Like, it's not that. But you're, these people are are destroying the consciousness and rewiring it in a way that it doesn't align with reality or end up in any sort of positive outcome that benefits humanity. It wouldn't be, but it still wouldn't be a stretch to say that there isn't a there isn't an evilness to this. There isn't an evil spirit behind oh, yeah. all this. Without a doubt, these people are they they they, they want to destroy things like this town right here, this white town. They see it as flawed. They see it as there's something wrong with this town because it's only white people and they're rich or they're 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 upper middle class or they're affluent or whatever you want to call, and there's no crime. There's nothing, you know, and they're just sitting out there living their lives. They want, they find flaw in that. And they want to change that. They want to alter these people's reality. And what they're going to do is they're going to bring crime. They're going to, and I'm sure these people got drugs. I'm sure they got opioids and fentanyl out here. And kids are fucking drinking and shit and getting in accidents and stuff like that. I'm sure it's not perfect, but. There's no carjackings. There's no like home invasions. There's not a corner where it's fucking 20 sun words hanging out every fucking day. There's not like teens riding around hunting. They don't have that shit. And I'm telling you, this right here sets the fucking stage for all of that shit. I recognize we need to deal with racism, bias, and sometimes just ignorance, but we need to make sure it's a constructive approach and not a destructive approach. I see lots of cultural generalizations um, that just aren't necessarily true. And the way to know my children, what they need is by getting to know them and talking to me as their mother. I don't think we have systemic racism. I think we have racist people. And I think people aren't helping to enforce the systems that we do have. I don't want to challenge you, but I, I would just say I, I talked to a student today who said it was normal for her to hear slurs in her classrooms and for teachers not to say anything. And that's why in her mind it was systemic because that was like almost the culture. I'm not doubting her experience whatsoever, but my point would be where's the accountability? The system doesn't allow the school teacher to be that way. They're, they don't know what's going on in their own hallways, and they're spending money on all the wrong things. I'm here for my kids to get an education. I don't need my kids taught how to rally, how to protest, how to march. Not my kids from their upper middle class home in their idyllic suburb. Thank Word you. carries quickly in Carmel. 
And before I left, a local organization sent me an email containing screenshots and videos collected by local students from social media. It was difficult to ascertain the identity of those that posted these clips, but it was clear that they were of high school age and from this area in Indiana. I'm really nervous. I don't know why. Okay, I'm going to look at the first thing. Wow, there's only two of them. So, so what? We don't even know what the fuck that's from. Right. Who gives like, a shit? Like, it, even if they did, let's just say that some fucking high school kid said that. You come from a place where a high school kid will, put, will fucking put a gun in your face and snatch you out your car and drive off laughing. Well, high school kid that same age will shoot into a crowd and get away with it and nobody will fucking tell on them. It'll be a hundred people there and nobody will tell on them. The kid will be back in school the next week um, making a rap song about the fucking incident. And if she took that serious, if she took what you just said serious, then like these glider teens would actually respect her. And they wouldn't know, you know, like troll and make fun of this girl behind her back. But because she's so dumb and she can't ascertain that that is the issue she should focus her efforts on, then they go home and sit in their basement and play Call of Duty and call her the hard R. This is my thing, though. Here's when you're when you're like this, right? And you're so touched, like she looks like she's about to cry, right? She looks like she's literally about to tear up. She's that like hurt her heart. You can see it hit her soul. She expects so much more out of these glider teens. She holds them to a higher standard in her own mind. In her mind, they're supposed to, even though they're teens, even though the person who did this may be 16 years old, She's like, yo, you're better than that. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be more reasoned and rational and mature. That's the thing. That's the problem. I think it's more like how dare I think it's more like how dare you say that about uh, about people who look like me. I don't think she really holds them and you know thinks she. I don't think really thinks she holds them to high standards. She thinks she just she just has contempt for them. Yeah, I think I she, think she, I she, think she, 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 she needs a she needs a good enough excuse to exact her to exact her hate and, and resentment towards. Yeah, her. I think that's more what it is that this whole like you got to be perfect if you're a glider is an unattainable standard, and it is unattainable because they don't want us to meet the standard because they want to have a reason to hate us, like and to make us to make us into this perfect thing is a is a way of dehumanizing us. Because nobody's perfect. But if I tell you you have to be perfect, I know you're never going to meet that standard. So I'll always have a reason to hate you. And remember, Ak, these people are all, they're all, they're always destructive. They can never cre- they never create anything. All they do is take they all do is take something that's good and just sh- and just shit on it. And they want to say they made it better. They never they never they never construct anything that's actually good. Everything is everything just needs to be destroyed in their in their mind. Salute the um, Savrix coming through once again. He says, imagine rendering population groups to be squishy as fuck to allow this shit to happen. Yeah, I mean, um, I I still think that there's a there's an element in some people where they feel like gliders are more of what every good trait. So if there's a good trait, we pick one. That gliders are more of that, and any bad trait that gliders are less of that. I really believe that some people think that, and I believe if this girl went to a black school and was doing a piece at some black school, and kids were like jumping on chairs, and some kid like beat the shit out of a teacher, or she walked in the hallway. And a bunch of sun queens was out there ripping each other's tracks out of their heads. And um, there was a shooting. And the, the, the next <laughs> kid, and she, kid she'd feel at home. She would feel at home. Would, she, no, but she, her, would her, blink, her, she wouldn't blink an eye. She, she, she'd be perfectly fine. There wouldn't be contempt for that behavior. There would be um, 
oh, this is happening because white people haven't given them more free stuff. That or that they're just having who, fun. Yeah, exactly. That white kid who's saying the N word, he knows better. Yep. And that's her problem. He knows better. I hate niggers. But I just wanted to say, black lives don't matter. <laughs> These are like white students who are just. <laughs> to fucking listen. Hey, listen, here's the thing. Yes, okay, this could be wrong, but what I'm saying is that. Yo, like we were talking about earlier, like, yo, nobody's dying. There's no litter on the ground. Nobody's going to lay a finger on you. Um, That's they want. System. These are random teens. If this is even real or from students from the school, these are just random teens anonymously talking to their phones. Yep. That's a big leap from claiming this the whole school system in America is systemically racist. Don't get me wrong. This I wouldn't want this. I wouldn't want nobody to be talking to me like this. I wouldn't want nobody. I wouldn't want to even know that like people I was friends with were doing this behind my back. I get it. It's it's fucked up. But this is yo know, the community that this woman comes from is so morbidly like um, dysfunctional and violent. And yeah, violent. I was gonna say violent. It just it, out of it, control. Like every we're gonna do once. Let's do one sentence.